For this week's tip, I want to talk a little bit about taxes. And really what I'm suggesting is to make sure that you do not hold too much money in taxable accounts over long periods of time. In this nation, after we make our initial deposit into some sort of a savings or investment account, that money is going to then grow one of three different ways. And, and it's up to you how you want it to see it grow. You can have your money in a taxable account, a tax-free account, or a tax-deferred account. But I think most people will underestimate the impact of taxes on their investments. So to illustrate the differences, I'm going to walk you through a real quick example of growing your money each of these three ways. The first way we'll take a look at growing money is everybody's favorite way to grow their money, and that is in a tax-free environment. So let's say that we were to take a dollar, and we were to go out and place it in a tax-free account. And let's assume, hypothetically, that we were able to double the value of the dollar every single year over a 20-year period. At the end of the 20 years, you would have just over $1 million if you're able to grow that dollar tax-free. The way that that works is the dollar would become 2, then 4, then 8, then 16, then 32. You do that 20 times in a row, you'll have just over $1 million. Now, what happens if we take the same dollar and we put it into a taxable account? Now, it might be a taxable money market or a CD, maybe a mutual fund, something of that nature. Again, hypothetically, we're going to double the value of the dollar each and every year over a 20-year period. But this time, because it's in a taxable account, we have to pay taxes on the growth out of the account each year. And let's say that we're in a 28% tax bracket, which is the national average for taxpayers today. So let's say we're doubling the dollar every single year. At the end of the 20 years, how much money do we think we will have if we're having to pay 28% in tax along the way? A lot of times when I ask individuals this question, I'll hear guesses such as $500,000 or maybe $700,000, things of that nature. Very few people get close because the actual number is only $57,000. Because of the taxes, you would only have $57,000 after 20 years. Now, the reason for this is because taxes rob us of the compounding interest. Einstein is famous for saying that compounding interest is the eighth wonder of the world. I'm not saying that he's wrong. It's just that when you allow the IRS to get a hold of your money, they have a little bit of an impact on it, don't they? So it's very inefficient to hold large sums of money in taxable accounts over long periods of time. Now, there's a third way you could grow your money that we haven't discussed yet, and that's in a tax-deferred environment. You see, because you can't always grow your money tax-free, you want to take advantage of every opportunity that comes along to do that, but we can't always grow money tax-free. But basically, everybody can grow their money tax-deferred. So if we use the same example again, we put a dollar in a tax-deferred account, hypothetically it doubles every year for 20 years. At the end of the 20 years, we're going to have just over $1 million because we don't pay taxes along the way. But of course, we will pay taxes when we take the money out. Now, let's assume we took all the money out all in one year. Now, most people don't do that. But for this example, let's say that we do that. Then after paying the tax bill, we're probably going to have somewhere around $600,000 maybe a little more, maybe a little less, in the tax-deferred account after paying the tax bill. So growing your money tax-deferred, of course, is not as good as growing it tax-free, but it's probably at least 10 times better than having your money in a taxable account. So make sure you do not have too much money in taxable CDs or mutual funds or money market accounts because the IRS is going to have a dramatic impact on how much money you have to spend and enjoy in the future, either for yourself or to pass on to heirs or beneficiaries. And you really have to ask yourself this question. Do we really think taxes are going to go higher or lower in the future? If you're like me and you think most people believe that they're going to go higher, now is the time to try and reposition those assets in, in, into tax-deferred accounts at least, and tax-free accounts if you can.